Hello and welcome back to the Longevity Learning Lab. Today we're going to take a look at the MIG Weld 100, a flux cord arc welding machine that uses self-shielded wire. It operates at 120 volts with a 20% duty cycle at 100 amps. So we'll take a moment here and we'll look inside the box and see what comes with it and then we'll set it up and try a few welds with it and see how it works. So hang out for a few minutes here and let's take a look. Okay, just for clarity, I've gone ahead and removed the packaging materials from the cardboard box and set the cardboard box aside. Make sure you don't leave it in a place where it might catch on fire when we start to weld. So I'm going to go ahead and remove some of the styrofoam packaging materials and unwrap the machine out of its protective plastic bag. Now that we've got the MIG Weld 100 out of the box, let's take a look at some of the components that come with it. Here's the 120 volt plug that goes into any household receptacle. Next is the work clamp that goes on to anything that we want to weld. Next is the flux cord arc welding gun that we will use our self-shielding wire to make our welds. If we look inside the top of the machine and opening up the cover, what we see is a small handheld welding helmet that we can use. If we've already got a helmet, this works great for our family and friends to look over our shoulder and see what's going on. Also, there's a handle to put on top of the machine so that you can easily pick it up and carry it around. The machine weighs less than 40 pounds. And then finally, is a spool of E71T flux cord arc welding wire that we can install and make a first few welds. So hang out for a few minutes and let's set it up and see how it works. Next, I'm gonna install the handle, slide that into place, and then take and install the screw. So slide it all the way back. The back should snap in and then I drop the screw in and secure it into place using a Phillips screwdriver. Make sure to install the screw protector inside of the cover. Next we're going to install the spool of 030 flux cord arc welding wire. I'm going to remove the nut from the pin that uses to retain the filler wire. I'm going to remove the spring assembly and drop the spool over the main spindle. Notice that there's a square on the end of the shaft and that has to line up with the retaining piece here under the spring. Then I go ahead and reinstall the nut on the top of it here to give it a little bit of tension so that I don't have too much free spool when I let off the gun and have the wire spin back onto it. Make sure that we install the wire so it comes off in this direction so that it feeds easily and freely into the drive rolls. If we install the wire so that it comes like this, we're going to have difficulty feeding and we're going to have poor welding results. So make sure that we've got the wire coming off and going in this direction. Now that I've got the wire on the machine, I need to feed it into the gun assembly. So the first thing I want to do is, is relief any tension that's on the feed rolls. So I'm going to open that up a little bit to give access for the wire so I can help feed it into the liner that goes to the gun. Next, I'm going to very carefully remove the wire from the spool and making sure that I don't lose it and have it back for, uh, spin freely backwards on me. Now I'm going to carefully bring it around and get it lined up and into this red guide tube here. Once it's in the guide tube I can very carefully feed it forward here and watching right here at the feed rolls and making sure that it leaves the red tube and enters the blue wire, the blue liner excuse me, that leads to the gun. Once we've got that in there, then we can close the feed roll, install the bale down on it to adjust the tension and hold it into place. If I want more tension, I can turn it. If I want to release the tension on it, I can release it. Now I can go ahead and squeeze the trigger and feed the wire into the gun. Now that we've got the wire through the gun, now there's just a couple of things left to do and we'll be ready to start welding. So I also need to install the contact tip that comes with it. So the contact tip is the piece that has the electricity actually placed on the wire 
as it, the wire passes through it. So I put that on there and then I also need to install the cup or shielding cup around the tip there just to protect it and put it on there in place. So there we are, we're ready to start welding. So let's take a look at some of the setups on the front of the machine and see how we're doing. The last thing I'm gonna wanna do is, is clip that wire off so that we can start welding. And then the other thing that with the nut and screw provided, we need to install the bale here that catches the top of the lid as we close it down and lock the machine shut. There we see the face of the MIG Weld 100. On the left, is the knob that adjusts the wire feed speed. In the center is a toggle switch marked min or max depending upon what our requirements are based on the settings of the machine inside the lid and then finally the on off switch which directly above that has a light that comes on if there's an internal fault or we've overheated the machine. So once again, thanks a lot for hanging out with us and taking a look at some of the capabilities and components of the MIG Weld 100. It's a good machine at a good price. If you're interested in reading more about it, take a look at our website, longevity-inc.com, or subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos like this in the near future, showing the capabilities of this machine and others of the Longevity line. So thanks again for hanging out, and I hope you have a great day.